After her chance, and relatively short, meeting Link and Iranian, the family fleet finally decided to reach Castle Loud. Seeing that the Vanzilla was still absent, Lynn knew that her parents were at work. She was glad for that, as Lynn wasn't in the mood with to play 20 questions as to how she was feeling. While the other girls seemed to be more optimistic about their chances of bringing the family back together again, the Jacques was still rather cynical about it. She didn't openly weep in front of the family besides Pop-Pop. Her depression was quite obvious despite repeatedly denying that someone was wrong with her. Nothing in her reflection, she saw that her hair was just a little disheveled from the bumping into her brother. Fixing it up, Lynn opened the door and shuffled inside. I'd. Luann was sitting on the couch reading over some geometry homework, as well as thinking up some puns to, for the subject. Lifting her head, hearing the door open. Oh, hey, Lynn. Hey. Lynn then half gazed, interested in the comedian. The 14 year old took notice of the light pink in Lynn's eyes as well as the younger girl's posture. She looked as if Lucy had suddenly appeared right in front of her with a hockey mask and a chainsaw. You okay? I I'm fine, Luann. That was all the Jacques could say before shuffling her backpack back towards the kitchen. She would have expected that response. Luann didn't like seeing if any of her family members sad, even though she understood the reasoning behind it. But at this point, she didn't probably want to press her luck again. While everyone was beginning to see hope only for the loud boy to return, Luann did try to get Lynn on the same boat. However, this innovator failed miserably. She tried telling jokes, only to get an annoyed groan in response. She tried her typical stand-up routines, but this just seemed to piss off the younger teen. Before the comedian could try anything else, she had duck out of Lynn and Lucy's room, as the sports lover threw several sports balls and a bat at her. And this happened yesterday. Lynn came back from the kitchen with a bottled water in her hand before climbing up the steps. She could hear the twins through an open door of their bedroom, but didn't even bother peeking in. She opened the door to her room and wasn't surprised to see Lucy nowhere in sight. She's probably in the vents again, the Jacques muttered. The 13-year-old looked at her bed as if it was calling to her. The lack of sleep over the past few days wasn't helping matters, but she could hardly leave find herself getting any rest. Since her nightmare, she lied awake in her bed every night, thinking about where she went wrong and how she was likely the worst sister on the planet. If she ever got to the point where she finally got tired enough to shut her eyes, said thoughts would come and continue to plague her throughout the night, robbing her by any chance of any actual rest. She lied down on the bed regardless, not to sleep, but because she had homework to do. Hours had passed since the family had returned home. Lori can be seen texting on her phone. Lenny was looking up mattresses on the computer. Luna and Luana were still putting the finishing touches on their little project. And for the first time in a while, the twins weren't arguing with each other. The parents had came around home around five, with Lynn prepping dinner like usual. Rita helping Lenny pick up the mattress for the bed. And they had a plenty of twin bed mattresses to choose from Mattresses Firm's website. But Lenny's indefiniteness was making it rather difficult. Ooh, Lincoln with totes left this one. Seconds later, she changed her mind. No, wait. This one would totally suit his new bed. But what about this one? Mom, how soft do you think it is this one? Lenny pointed on the screen. Hard to say, dear. The mattress me and your father sleep on is made of polyester, cotton, and polystyrene molding. Lenny then looked a little lost at this. Basically, memory foam mattress, sweetie? Oh, but wait. How does a bed keep your memories? The foam in the mattress shapes the way you sleep, dear. What? I didn't know how you sleep in matters. I've been totally underdressed this whole time. Rita then gave a small laughter at her daughter's reaction. Look, Lenny, how about after school I take you to the mattress store so we could pick one out for him? Like, okay. Lenny smiled. Family, dinner time, the loud partisans shouted as he carried for tonight's dinner into the dining room. As he slated on the evening meal schedule, he was serving up meatballs today. A chorus beat was stamping where heard take the room apart, and another delicacy made the chef in the, of the house. Lynn then looked around and noticed everyone's seat position. As usual so far, Lincoln's was empty. Albert went back to his retirement home yesterday. 
The elder man told the parents they found Lincoln and had a chat with him, assuring the two adults that the boy was considering forgiving them all. However, Albert made it clear that both Reed and Lynn Sr. himself would both need to have a long chat with their son about his place in the family once they figure out how to regain his trust. As the father scanned and is now eating family, he frowned as another seat that was empty, Lynn Jr.'s. This was the first time that Lynn hadn't come down. Not that it would be surprising, since the father knew that she was taking the whole situation pretty hard. However, it was rather jarring that she wouldn't even join the family in eating their favorite meal. Sure, he could understand Junior not liking the succotash and fish fry. She probably wasn't in the mood for a Salisbury steak yesterday. But when you have a daughter who can chew and fruit meatball subs like a wood chipper, you'd think with even her be upset. She still enjoyed the taste, or at least eat them, as it means a lot of comfort. Given a small sigh. Lucy, could you? Don't worry. I'll get her, the eight-year-old stated before he finished. Lucy briskly walked up the stairs towards her room, her stomach nagging at her for cutting its feeding time short. At this point, it was already self-voluntarily that she was the one to coax Lynn down to eat. The other sisters had opted to do it as well, but since the emo shared the same room with the sports lover, she was likely closer to Lynn than the others. In the past, any attempts to get Lynn to come out ended up with the Burnett refusing to come down and Lucy giving up, but not this time. When someone in the house skipped over this favorite meal, clearly something was up, and Lucy intended to get the stubborn athlete out of her room whenever she wanted to come willingly or not. Seeing that the door was closed, Lucy knocked first. Lynn? But not getting an answer. The eight-year-old poked her head in, spotting the teen reading a book with a tired expression on her face. Fangs was sitting once again on top of Lynn's head, peering at the same book. Either she didn't seem to notice, or she didn't care. No matter how many times Lucy was used to seeing this, it still bothered her to see Lynn unlike herself. Lynn, it's time to eat. I'm not really hungry, Luce. Lucy gave a larger frown. You always say that, but I often hear your stomach beckoning that you give it sustenance. I just don't feel hungry, Lucy. Is that too much for me to say? Lynn replied, growing irritated. Not even for your favorite meal? Hill, you know Dad serves meatballs every Monday. The mere the attention made Lynn's stomach gurgle loudly. Lucy had to fight the urge to give even the slightest smile at this. However, the brunette chose to remain indigent as usual. I, I think I'll pass. Sigh. Look, Lynn. I know you're taking this harder than the rest of us, but destroying yourself isn't going to make things better. Lynn then shot a glare at her roommate. The sun forced some movement fangs to fly off their heads to Lucy's. Who said I was? Lynn, you can't lie to me. I can actually feel the darkness and misery raiding you off. Actually, I wouldn't even need to feel, because it's obvious it's clear as day. The younger sibling stated monotonously. It doesn't take a genius to find out, as everyone knows you're disapp depressed about Lincoln's absence. It's very obvious that you blame yourself for everything that's happened and wish to receive punishment. The guilt is eating you at one point, and you can eat, sleep, or, fun or even function properly during that day. I don't think I even noticed how slow you walked when you should be walking like you should have on purpose. Not only that, your appearance does look like as if someone is suffering slow, decaying death. The teen was about to open her mouth to form a retort, but her exhaustion made a task a chore. Not only that, no matter how much Lynn could deny it, Lucy read her like an open book. It was foolish to think that she would fool someone who experiences depression on a daily basis. Glancing up at the large mirror in the room, Lynn could see herself in the former glory. Bangs under her tired eyes, and said eyes were slightly red from the lack of sleep. Her hair was a little out of place, and to add on to the list, she swore her skin looked slightly paler than usual. Although she looked far from it, Lynn thought that she almost looked like a living corpse. Staring at her bed sheets in defeat. That's because I deserve it, Lucy. Everything was my fault. If I had just worked to took my frustration out on something other than my own brother, then none of this would have happened. I know you'll say that Lincoln had to pardon it too by spreading it that lie, but if I hadn't called him bad luck in the first place, 
he wouldn't have gotten that idea in his head. I haven't been able to look at myself in the mirror until now, because all I see is a sore loser who is too immature to responsibility and instead blamed others for their own failures. They had no influences on the outcome. I barely eat because I feel sick to my stomach just thinking about it all. Lucy calmly patted Fangs on the head. I'm assuming your lack of sleep is due to the nightmares you had. The athlete gave a small nod. I can't have even nightmares if I don't fall asleep, but I can still hear that ha taunting voice in my head. So what happened, Lynn? When you first had that nightmare, you still had that somewhat of annoying flare that you have when you first got your crutches? Sorry for saying that, but I'm being honest. Over the past few days, you started to fall into a pit of despair and with even hopelessness and woe to comfort you. Lucy then looked on the floor for a moment. It's, it's actually scaring me to see you becoming like myself. What happened to you? The old you. Lynn then flipped around so she was on her back. She then died at the moment that she had time to reflect everything. I doubt I will do anything to make Lincoln forgive me for what I did. That's where you're wrong. Lynn lifted her head up and so looked at the emo in confusion. Huh? You aren't the only one only person to blame for what happened. Well, it is true you were partially in the catalyst and the suffering, but we are enduring it correct currently. You shouldn't shelter all the blame. Lucy then sat on her sister's bed. You're all forgetting that all of us are at fault of how we ended up treating Lincoln. If we ha if he had used a bad luck fib to his advantage, but we ended up taking things too the far the point he felt betrayed by those he loved. Each of us is feeling regretful, and all the good times we've had, our brother seems nothing now that we cast him out like he hadn't been in our lives for 11 years. In my case, it makes me feel like a mouse when he reminded me of the noble deed he did when the toilet was clogged. What are you talking about? He always bombs the toilet. Lucy then shook her head. In other cases, yes, but not this time. He had a convention that weekend, and that book actually belonged to me. I was too afraid about getting teased by you guys that Lincoln took the fall for me. He was rightfully then pleased when I found him in the library on Friday. And his very words, I had known you'd kick me to the curb like the rest of my so-called family. But I would have let you just admit the truth. Lucy then stared at the floor in sorrow. He even said he might have a, a laugh at me too. As for our parents, I recall the time they said they wouldn't kick any of us out of the house. Imagine how they feel right now, having to live with that broken promise. Lynn then stared at the ceiling with a frown. Despite all that, if Lincoln truly felt that we were beyond forgiveness, he wouldn't have ratted us out to the cops. He wouldn't have given us a chance to make it up to him. The black-haired child then put a cold hand on Lynn's forehead. So please, Lynn, I know you're drowning in the guilt, but don't do it alone. We're your family and you know, and we're all in the same boat. I saw him today. Lucy lifted her head a bit in surprise. From her position, Lynn could see the shock in her roommate's eyes. You did? Well, actually, I bumped into him. He looked all ready to beat me to death, Lucy. I could see the hate forming on his eyes as he glared at me while I was on the ground. He could have actually dominated me if there would have been little I could do to stop him. But instead of hurting me, he blamed himself down and asked me on how my foot was doing. Then I asked him if I was doing okay, to which he said good, and then I just bolted out of there. I don't know what stopped him. Maybe it's the fact we forgive the twins or something? I don't know. Or did he see the damage he did to you as you opted not to attack? It was the first time you've seen both in since another Thursday night, right? Yeah, you would have believed me if I told you that meeting Lincoln like that would have made me more scared than the times you constantly popped out of nowhere. After that level of focused rage twice, I believe you. Lincoln used to get really nervous any time I threatened him. Now I know how he feels. Lynn rubbed her nose. But in a strange way, somewhere inside of me feels proud of him. How so? The eight-year-old asked. I've always wanted him to see him stand up for himself. At least he to prove that he can handle his own business. I wish it was an under entirely different situation though. Lynn's stomach growled again asking her when she was going to get up off her butt and feed it. Ah, you know what, fine. 
I'll eat something. She then sat up on the bed and hugged her little sister. Thanks for the talk, Luce. Lucy returned it, giving a faint smile. However, that moment was ruined when a punch had smelled in her nose. Gross! What? When was the last time you showered? By the time Lynn and Lucy came down, most of the family had just finished about eating. Only the parents, Lisa and Lily, were still at the table. The former two do were concerned for the two girls, since they were upstairs for 22 minutes. While the toddler was trying to help, fa help feed Lily, since she wouldn't stop playing with her food. It was rather cute to see, as Lisa didn't do this quite often. When it was up to the kids to feed her, Luna or Lincoln would have been tasked with this job, but since the former was busy and the latter was absent, Lisa was given this important job. The boy it was adorable. The toddler had difficulty trying to get Lily to sit still for a moment, so she'd eat the meatball. The infant responded by getting the sauce uh, somewhere on the prodigy's glasses. Giggling while doing so, Lisa kept the stoic face as she removed her eyewear for the cleaning. The parents found themselves smiling at the sight, but then shifted their focus on their two other daughters. Whatever Lucy did to coax Lynn to join them, they were rather grateful for it. Upon realizing what they missed, Lynn Singer went on and told them that the other girls' days were more or less the same, though. Lana had a pretty interesting day. A few of her classmates congratulated her for sticking up for her brother, as well as saying she had a pretty cool bro, given how Lincoln wholeheartedly returned the favor. As for the parents, Rince, Rita then went on too about discuss how the miss unfortunate of ins inspecting Chandler's mouth. Earning the disgruntled looks from the two, Lynn made a comment saying that she would have pulled a few more teeth out, but Rita stated that she had to do her job regardless of who was on the chair. When it was the same person, Lucy stated that her day was depressing as usual, with Lynn thanks to that talk she had with Lucy, she was more willing to be opened up to her parents. She then told them everything, not from feeling too well for the day, to pump in into Lincoln while she was walking home. The last part caught everyone's eye sounds as Lucy by surprise, with their nervousness and very clear since both Lynn and Lincoln had departed on a sour note. However, Lynn erased her worries by her first stating that she wouldn't get into another fight. While she was immensely scared, Lincoln kept himself calm and spoke with indifference. This gave the parents some hope that Lincoln would, was really going to the beginning to come around. But as far as anyone, the adults felt that it was still a long way off before their son could even consider returning home. But at least they could do was try to initiate some form of contact. Hopefully Lincoln wouldn't block their phone numbers. Elsewhere in Royal Woods, there was another set of kids who were going on on their business. Inside a medium-sized two-story house, Connor was sitting on his bed with his butt mashing the controllers of the same game system he was playing. He had been playing Muscle Fish on multiplayer for the last hour and was growing more and more frustrated by the frequent losses he accumulated did against some user named a 7 11 Come on, come on, come on! This has to work! The blonde said near anger. He tried another combo move against the opponent, who managed to block it and reduce the damage it would have taken. Then said appointment got this special move and finished his character. The defeat logo flashed on the screen in bold red, as if it was mocking the child. With an irritation look boiling over, Connor went to a series of rants on how he ended up losing. A knock on his door then made him quiet down. Yeah? The 11-year-old was met with the irate look from his oldest sister. Connor, you should really be careful when you swear like that. You know mom and dad will ground you again, Carol stated. Sorry, but this game just really gets to me. Why don't you just play single player or co-op? Single player is boring and co-op isn't as funny and fun as kicking butts on other players. And yet you still got yours kicked because you were whining like a baby? The elder blonde smirked. Was not, Connor fumed, blushing slightly. Carol just gave a bigger smile before ruffling her brother's hair. Here, let's play co-op and I'll show you that it's not boring. The boy could only grumble as his sister picked up a second controller. After about five minutes of playing, they were both heavily focused on trying to get past a rather frustrating level. Ugh, timing these friars is really so off, the teen groaned. I know, right? Connor then sat in the moment in silence for a moment, his fingers fiddling with the controls. Hey, sis... Hmm? You know those days when you come home about mad about something? What was that about? 
Well, there's this girl named Lori who keeps giving me rude comments. People say we look like sisters, but I don't even see the resemblance. I remember a couple times Lori's sister, Lenny, had mistaken me for her. But the thing is, I don't even know what I did to get on Lori's bad side. Maybe it was because I won some homecoming queen last semester and she didn't. If that's it, then how am I supposed to apologize over something everyone voted on? If it's not, then I don't know what her problem is. I'm just trying to ignore it, but she always gives me this scornful look every time we happen to look at each other. Doesn't help that occasionally I hear her talking about me behind my back. Connor then glanced at his sister. Doesn't that count as bullying? No, she hasn't done physically anything, or on the internet. But if it does, I might have to say yes to finally. No yes, finally! Carol shouted in joy as she managed to get to the end of the level. Connor's character had died due to a mistimed jump. Connor smiled a bit in the slight affiliation of being beaten, rather difficult part of the game, even if his sister carried them off to the objective. So, um, why did you ask that? Carol asked. Mm, just something out of my mind, and there is another question. If you were about to do something, think, even if it was bad and you'll regret it later, would you still do it? Carol then looked in her brother in silence, wondering what was going on. Connor, is someone messing with you at school? What? No, you know. I haven't said, had a bully since first grade. Then why would you ask that? It's not just a random question that pops out of the blue, you know, the teen said, frowning for him on her face. Connor sweated a little. He could just let his sister know of the big deal he made with Chandler, and what would be more fuel to the fire, and get himself in serious trouble. Instead, he decided to steer the question back to Carol's issue with Lori. I mean, you're fairly nice and all, but I don't see how someone like you could make enemies. That's what I'm saying. If you get to the point where you had to punch Lori in the face, would you do it? Carol hummed and fought. She didn't have, she had many issues with Lori and school-wise while that was going on. They hardly interact outside of the educational system. In fact, Lori had barely given her any issues over the last couple days, so the chances of them fighting were very unlikely. The blonde wasn't really a fighter. But she firmly believed violence was, doesn't solve anything. She couldn't even see herself slapping someone, but rather telling them off. Still, Connor did have a point. To be honest, I'm not sure. The first thing I do is just chew her out before being needlessly mean, but if I had to actually hit her, maybe I just slapped her, but I don't know how good that would do. But what if you had to actually go downtown to town on her? Like I said, Connor, I don't know. It'd probably just be in the heat of the moment. Baby, the boy muttered. Carol looked at Connor in irritation. What was that? I said you're a baby. I mean, who would be afraid of hit someone who wooly deserved it? Oh, I'll show you who's the real baby in the house, Carol said with a sinister grin. The 11-year-old realized what this meant. Carol, no, don't you dare. That was all Connor said before Carol jumped him, making him erupt into a laughing fit as she tickled his sighs. Say you're the baby. N never the boy, the blonde re little blonde replied, laughing his head off. Say it, or I'll start your on your feet, Carol teased. Uh, okay, okay, I'm the baby. I'm the baby. D this is not dead. Connor shouted, almost out of breath. Satisfied, the teen stopped. And don't you forget it, bro. He pe she pecked him on the forehead, much to the boy's annoyance. Looking at the clock, Carol was surprised by the time. Wow, it's 9.30 already? Game then moves slower than time moves slower than real time. Everyone knows that, Connor stated, as if it was a fact. Carol then just shrugged. Eh, whatever. I'm gonna get ready for bed. Without another word, the teen walked out of the room, shutting the door behind her. In the Santiago house, Lincoln held up in triumph smirk as he, he crushed yet another opponent on the muscle fish game that he had brought with him. If you looked at the top of his health bar, its name Ace Savvy Fan 11 stood out in bold letters. The boy started to laugh as said appointment rage quit after getting their character schooled for the fifth time tonight. And another one down, and another one down, and another one bites the dust. Lincoln sang as he started doing a victory dance. Well, you could wreck people in Musclefish, but you can't beat me in Turbo Blasters, Ronnie Ann smirked. But I managed to beat you in Dance Revolution, Lincoln replied. Then you came second and fourth in Mario Kart 8, and right before the finish line on the last lap, the Hispanic girl laughed. 
Curse you, blue shells. You know they tend to ruin friendships, right? Lincoln grumbled. He really hated how those things pop up behind him when he's in the lead. Especially when he didn't have anything to block it. Hey, but they wouldn't ruin this one. I mean, I'm the one that fired it. Ronalda laughed. Her slint in the arcade helped Lincoln take his mind off of the encounter with Lynn. But Ronalda could only still linger in his mind from the way he would temporarily slip into deep thought. However, it didn't seem to bother the platinum-haired child for so long. You know what? I want a rematch for that. So you want to get your ass kicked again? The smug grin on her face said it all. Lincoln then returned the gesture. I'm not the one who got mad when you lost at those two other games. The that was because the game was glitching. My sore arm says otherwise. Ronalda grew irate. Naturally, she wasn't a fan of losing, especially when someone was right and called her out for her excuse. Looking at Lincoln's game, she gave a smug grin. Bet I can beat you in that stupid game. Lincoln then grew surprised at the girl's accusation, but put on his bravado. Really? You really think you can maw me at that at most classic game in history? Oh, I can, unless you're afraid of getting your butt whooped. Lincoln gave a small chuckle. I bet I can get a few flawless victory. Oh, really? Well, then, let's make this interesting. If you win, when I'll make you a full stack of waffles with your name on it. The chip-toothed boy child could even feel his mouth beginning to water at the mention of a decent breakfast. Ronalda started to think of what she could do out of this if she won. She would have had Lincoln doing something embarrassing, but that would be too easy. Plus, it would be the last thing Lincoln needed his life being in a mixed bag right now. However, maybe there was something he could do, not only as a confidence booster, but also she figured out the nerd could learn to keep a proper balance. Lincoln grew nervous as she saw Ronnie Ann form a devilish smirk. Um, Ronalda? If I win, I'm teaching you how to skateboard. Memories of last Friday crept into Lincoln's mind. Oh man, what did I get myself into? He finally spoke in his mind. Why would Ronnie Ann want to teach him how to use a skateboard? Of course he knew how to handle himself on the bike, but skateboarding? Was she going to enjoy seeing him fall on his face? He silently prayed that the gaming gods were on his side. Otherwise, he was in for a long day ahead.